Greetings, everyone. This is a quick five minutes presentation about the vicious worm called the tinea solium, uh, which is colloquially known as the pork worm and medically causes infection of the brain known as neurocystic sarcosis. Uh, this is an emerging foodborne zoonosis and affects millions of uh, people in sub Saharan Africa. My goal is to educate the general public about tinea solium and help those with particularly high burden of disease prevent neurocystic sarcosis. Here is an outline of my presentation. Tinea solium is transmitted between humans and pigs. This tapeworm causes a lot of human suffering, stigmatization, and death. In addition, infected pigs lead to considerable economic losses. Tinea solium, tapeworm infections can lead to neurocystic sarcosis, which is a disease that can cause seizures. In fact, neurocystic sarcosis is a leading cause of preventable acquired epilepsy in the developing world. It is also the most common helminthic infection of the central nervous system. Tinea solium cystic sarcosis is an emerging disease because the demand for pork is increasing in sub-Saharan Africa, while the knowledge regarding T. solium is almost non-existent. Free roaming, roaming pigs are the norm. Meat inspection is ne either non-existent or inappropriate, Open defecation is highly prevalent and personal and meat hygiene are poor. Tinea solium is a significant health and economic burden in sub-Saharan Africa. Since 1970, T. solium has been found in 29 African countries. In West Cameroon, the total annual health cost in 2009 was estimated to be 10.3 million euro. In Eastern Cape Province in 2004, South Africa, the most the cost was estimated to be uh, five million U.S. dollars for the agricultural sector alone. Therefore, this is a very relevant public health issue. Here is a 2015 map created by the CDC showing the approximate distribution of neurocystic sarcosis cases in the world. This infection is caused by ingestion of eggs shed in the feces of a human tapeworm carrier. Humans are infected either by ingestion of infected meat, such as the white nodules you see here, or food contaminated with infected feces, or even by auto-infection. Once eggs are ingested, oncospheres hatch in the intestine and invade the intestine wall and migrate to striated muscles as well as the brain, liver, and other tissues where they develop into cysticerci. The parasite life cycle is completed when humans ingest undercooked pork containing cysticerci. Cysts evaginate and attach to the small intestines by their solex. Adult tapeworms develop up to 2 to 7 meter in length and reside in the small intestines for years. So many patients have no symptoms or mild symptoms such as nausea, abdominal pain, or diarrhea. Or you might see some tapeworm segments in the stool. However, often you need a microscope to do so. Lack of knowledge about this vicious worm puts people at risk for getting human cysticercosis. Other risk factors are having a tapeworm carrier in the household, low levels of personal and kitchen hygiene, poor household sanitation, open defecation, and use of night soil, which is human feces collected at night from buckets and used as manure for food produ production. Diagnosis of cysticercosis can be done in the hospital by a physician by biopsy or fine needle cytology, enzyme-linked amino blot assay, and CT scan or MRI can also detect lesions. Eosinophils in the CSF are also indicative of neurocysticercosis. Finally, we can even do a PCR test to detect T. solium's DNA in the CSF. Basic prevention strategies include avoiding consumption of infected pork, cooking pork thoroughly, heat to temperature of 80 celsius or cook for at least 20 minutes and freezing pork at a minus 20 celsius for at least 10 days
But that's not all. On a policy level, we must inform and educate all stakeholders about the disease. We must encourage stopping of open defecation by people of all ages. We must encourage using of toilets that pigs cannot access. Teniosis, the human tape worm disease, can be treated by anti-helminthic drugs such as prezequental or niclosamide. However, neurocysticercosis can be treated in different ways. For example, by it can be treated by removing the intraventricular cyst, by putting a CSF shunting, or by endoscopic ventriculostomy. Cyst cysticidal drugs have also been proven to be effective, such as the albendazole. Also note that neurosurgical resection is still necessary in cases of intraventricular cysts, giant subarachnoid cysts usually loc located within the lateral fissure or comp compressive cysts at the spinal level. These will require neurosurgical resection. Also note that the MRI of the spine is also mandatory to search for intraspinal lesions. So to conclude, I would like to remind you of some of the keys discussed in this presentation about how to avoid becoming a victim of this infection. So please keep these key solutions in mind. Stop open defecation. Confine all pigs and piglets to at all times. Ensure proper meat inspection. Condemn infected pork. Cook pork properly. Wash hands before food preparation. Educate all stakeholders and provide clean drinking water to pigs and to people. Here are my references. Well, this concludes my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something you didn't know before. Bye.